Professors were, were all very uh, dedicated and focused. Um, they had time to, to really looking at, looking at each of us individually. Obviously the, the school, the environment was, uh, was great. There, there was also the, the international element, which I found really, really enriching uh, culturally and, and also just opening new horizons. That's the kind of thing you can hear on a phone call, you can hear on a presentation, and um, you know, passion will open more doors than you can believe. So, there's been a couple times in my career where I've been offered the much better paying job, and instead I've chosen the job that's the one that would get me jazzed up, uh, where I'd be surrounded by people who challenge me and, and push me forward. And there's nothing worse when you have young people that sit in front of you and say, what do you want to do? I don't know. Where you want to go? I don't know. You want to go outside states? I don't know. You know, the I don't know uh, people you cannot help. You have to know what you want and you have to be determined and you have to be structured why you want this. I said, Andy, you're 34. If you want to become a general manager, you have to have a general view and know a little bit of everything rather than a lot of one thing. One is a specialization and one is generalization. If you want to be a generalist, make sure you don't waste time. I should tell you this, but every day you come to work here, you're wasting your time. The biggest enemy of a career is time. The moment the job doesn't give you anything anymore, you have to move on. How do you keep current with so much information out there, with all the emerging trends that are changing the world? And ultimately, it comes back to human-centered design. Technology is only valuable if it makes your life better. If Twitter is a pain, don't do it. If Facebook is a drain on your time, don't do it. If it enhances your life, if you learn more, knowing what information is of interest to you should be driven by your passion. I am a firm believer that blindly sending a resume to anyone is a waste of time. So I think you must use the relationships that you establish, get involved in any organization to meet as many people as you possibly can, and don't be afraid to demonstrate your knowledge and your passion with little or absolutely no compensation as a chance to demonstrate uh, your willingness and interest in working with somebody. Network. Every contact made, every business starts with hello. Some people are a little bit sharper and we are it louder than others. You have to sell yourself, you know? And you will be hired for your qualities, not for your shortcomings. Think about a career in education because a lot of the faculty today are going to be retiring and we need to have young people coming up the ranks to be professors teaching. So think about that. Get great experience because you know some of the best professors you have have worked in the industry. Think about careers in being general managers not only of hotels but in the whole medical campus. 80 percent, 80 percent of the services in the hospital are hospitality services. Every time I go on the ships they're trying to recruit managers and they say to our students you know, we need managers, we're growing, they're building new ships, and we want you to consider a career in the cruise industry. Any successful hotelier usually has been around. It is about mobility and it is about decision making that will lead you to a career. If you choose this business, you will always find a job. Always. There are hotels being built by the hundreds, by the thousands around the world. Contrary to other industries that are shrinking, ours is growing. There were many uh, practical examples and we met a lot of uh, successful and nice people here today. First I learned that I'm studying the right thing.
mostly I got inspiration out of it, giving up on our dream and always uh, look for the new opportunities. Yeah, I would like to have my own hotel in the future.